to another video. I had a very successful time at the uh, flower market. Everybody was really nice. I got a discount. This was all together, what's five, 11. I got my friend some flowers too. I'm heading to her house for lunch. This is a friend that I have known since high school and we have birthdays that are very close together. Um, and we're having a very belated birthday lunch um we it's cute because we like used to celebrate our birthdays together in high school um and so now that she's moved here we can like continue the tradition but i think just for right now i'm gonna give you a little life catch up um because as i told you kind of at the end of my last video i have been playing around with trying to make a video about a topic that constantly changes like my feelings toward this topic are constantly in flux. I'm gonna talk about it much more in detail, I think later tonight when I have more time and stuff. So right now, just gonna catch you up. I tried to, I made up a couple different vlogs um, with footage, but I ended up thinking like, it just, I didn't feel right just like throwing it together and putting it out there. So I'm just gonna walk you through what's been going on and I can show you a few clips. So most recently, one of my dear friends who I used to work with, Kurt and I both know her and love her, um, she recently moved so we had a housewarming party and I took you guys along to shop for a housewarming gift and then I pretty much just went to the same stores that I go to all the time in Sungsu for cute little knickknacks. Um, so I ended up getting her cookies, a cute candle um, and then like a cute little doggy poop bag holder because <laughs> she has the most adorable dog in the world um, and I also visited a cowboy themed cafe because why not <laughs> um, it was also Lunar New Year here um, and for the first time I went to Kurt's mom's side of the family's his grandparents grave site so he actually also never did this like usually he would do something with like the dad side of the family this was kind of new for both of us and i was so honored to be able to go because i also went with his uncle and his cousins and we went to their grandparents grave so like not related to kurt technically and they were just like so sweet explaining things i got to kind of be a part of like kurt's gram grandma and grandpa's part um it had just snowed so it was just the most beautiful drive it was just a, a really beautiful day and then we got to have like lunch and stuff we had also gone to kurt's mom's house earlier like a couple days prior for like new year's dinner um so i really wasn't expecting to do all that other stuff um so this was a really great surprise and i'm just really thankful that they like take me along on these things and then about two days ago um i got really sick the other day I, I woke up and had like all of the normal symptoms of vertigo but then that faded very quickly so i don't know what it was but i was just very very sick for about 24 hours very weak couldn't keep anything down ironically that kind of tied into what we're going to talk about later about productivity this obsession with self-improvement improvement and stuff um i literally couldn't do anything because of my like semi vertigo thing i couldn't look at anything like keeping my eyes open or closed sucked but like closed was better and so yeah i i had like a two-day period of absolutely could not be productive and so i just kind of like laid with my eyes shut and thought about what i what i wanted to say what i want to talk about i am going to finish getting ready um, and then I'm going to meet you back here a little bit later 
to talk to you about my thoughts and it's gonna be a ramble as usual this is literally like a collection of my shower thoughts and my before bed thoughts if you would like to stick around and just have a little nighttime chat with me you're very much invited i'm going to head out and i will catch you guys back here um thank you for being here and i hope that um your new year's and everything was really good and i will yeah i'm gonna go okay Hi everyone, you don't mind if I'm a little orange, do you? <laughs> the sun is going to set soon. I know it doesn't look like it. It is like a nasty cold gray day outside. Let's just jump in. Originally, I wanted to make this video about productivity because I was feeling so guilty. Ever since I switched to doing YouTube on a full-time basis because or like for the first three years of this, um, I had a full-time job and YouTube. Ever since I've switched, I've felt this extreme guilt for not having a nine to five, especially like during a pandemic when we're hearing about like nurses working 27 hour shifts and stuff like that. I just felt like I didn't deserve to have free time and even if i was working like i love what i do so it like cliche but it didn't feel like work i like was really honestly struggling with that and so i was just kind of working through that and so i originally was going to make a video about what i actually do during the week as far as like productivity and the first day i was filming my like typical booktube routine which is wake up early start filming at 10, finish filming and edit it and have it done usually within like 10 hours um, and like don't leave the desk. <laughs> um, and so it's like that part isn't super interesting but it happened to be a snow day and those are far and few between, few and far between um, this year and so I don't wanna deprive you of a snow day. So I am gonna show you a little clip from that vlog so that is going to be like the gist of our productivity talk. Here is a day in my life. I just filmed. Can you hear me? <laughs> I'm done filming. It's snowing. Now I'm going to edit. The window's open so I can get some fresh air. My uh, wind chime. Having some fun. Okay, bye. Hello. <laughs> it's editing time. I need this, so sorry. Bye. Stay. for about six hours i have just been refilling my cup of water <laughs> that's my like booktube work day i do one of these a week um my butt and this chair are well acquainted i don't have anything to say it's something that i'm just kind of working on every single day and like having to just yeah i don't really i don't really have any advice like it's just something that i'm working with and i would love to start a conversation in the comments if you guys do have any advice. But when it comes to productivity in my personal life, I have things to say. <laughs> I always try to fill my time with little self-improvement projects. I do believe that like as humans, we should be striving to always be learning and growing, but I've noticed it take kind of a negative turn in myself 
um, especially during the pandemic, but I think I've always, like ever since I've left school, um, I think I've had a kind of negative relationship with self-improvement, let's just say. When I was in school and I was going through all of these life changes, life would just kind of teach me things by itself you know like not only was i learning things in school living in new york city navigating new things like new jobs and internships and you know new people living with strangers stuff like that you just naturally learned so much now it's partially because we can't travel anymore and we're not seeing as many people and doing as many things but also I'm at a really stable point in my life where I'm in a house that we're probably going to stay in for like a year or so. I'm sorry about the focus. You can just, this is supposed to be like a podcast. You can just listen to the background. I have this house. I'm married. I'm not looking to change jobs right now. I'm not really traveling. We aren't getting a dog. And I've set up a routine. Like, you know, my little daily sanity walks. There's like the three cafes that I go to that I like to work in. I have this wonderful, beautiful routine that is so good for my mental health and so many people strive for that like really wouldn't it be great if everybody could be in a position of just stability and not this like flux going on all the time so in my personal life like i'm happy to be here but i also feel like shouldn't i be growing shouldn't i be changing shouldn't things be happening to me because i've just gone through my teens and my 20s which are so filled with change and so i've noticed and this i mean i've been doing this like i said since i graduated college but like i was trying to create this like perfect cocktail of like coursera classes fitness classes and i was gonna meditate like i was trying to achieve so much and make all of this unnatural growth that it wasn't like back in the day like i would learn things because i genuinely wanted to learn them and now i feel like even though i do genuinely want to learn them there's also this push of and you should because you should be growing i think it really all stemmed from me comparing myself to the younger versions of me that was constantly learning and growing and i think that i've reached this point in my life where like i can take all of that growing that i did all of that learning and i can just live with it you know and i think that since starting this video and kind of like sitting with that idea i'm now at peace with there are points in your life when you're gonna be growing and there are points in your life when you're gonna be kind of coasting and even when you're just living you're still learning things i think i'm i think i'm at a like just a stable point which is fine and i know that there are going to be bumps in the road in the future that are going to cause me to continue to grow and maybe now is the time to like rest and just worry about other things before i have to deal with future challenges um and i was kind of thinking about like where did that pressure come like why am i putting that pressure on myself at least just simply from a professional standpoint stability is great but it's not good content <laughs> during this pandemic especially i felt like this weird identity crisis where i started this channel because i wanted to make travel content and obviously that's not possible right now and so it became a lot more like quote unquote lifestyle and that's difficult when my life is kind of the same every day and like i'm so happy personally about it but like i can't make the same video every week you know i was having that issue and i still kind of am to be honest and so just like the productivity drawer we're just gonna shut that like that's an issue that i'm still dealing with and thinking about but like we're not gonna solve it today so i'm just gonna shut that drawer and move on to what i kind of really want to talk to you about and that's more like on the personal side i suppose i really kind of serendipitously uh, came across this topic in like a couple podcasts youtube videos etc and instead of talking about self-improvement it was just talking about sense of self in and of itself 
Um, my neighbor's been super quiet, by the way. Oh my God, Angel, love her. We're best friends now. <laughs> anyway, it was talking more in the sense of like marketing and social media, but in advertising brands, whether it's a product or a fitness class or something like that, they want an audience that's really malleable. They want to have the person feel like there's a hole in them and this product will fill that hole or like this one thing will lead you towards your ideal sense of self, right? And so what it would like you to be is a little bit insecure in yourself and not necessarily like insecure as in having a low self-esteem, but insecure in just not being really sure who you are and i think that i personally see this the most for me in fashion because i don't really have a set sense of style i like a lot of things i'm also not super committed or interested to fashion so i don't really have like a set aesthetic that i stick to so i'm a lot more easily swayed by trends especially like if you see it over and over and over again, I'll be like, yeah, I kind of like that. And I start veering towards it. So really what I want to focus on this year, rather than self-improvement, is really just a stronger sense of self. Like I, I know who I am and I like who I am, but I also know that like I could be, I can know more about myself and I can be stronger in who I am. Um, I'm a people pleaser, so I like to mold myself to fit certain situations to make other people more comfortable. I want to do that less, like I want to know and like stick up for myself as far as like what I like, what I want. And something I really want to focus on, and I was talking to my friend at lunch about this, is making sure I really like something. Like I was talking to Kurt as well because every website their goal is to keep you on their website or app for as long as possible. Instagram is really famous for this with their algorithm. And what the algorithm is gonna do is it's gonna feed you content that you probably already like. Like it's adjacent to things that you've already shown interest in. And so what ends up happening and what like has totally happened to me is that you're getting fed stuff that is so within your toolbox as far as like imagination and understanding. That is the only stuff that you really see see like it's really hard to come across things that are so out of your comfort zone and new when it comes to social media um you have to actively search for it most of the time that's a problem when you're only seeing this one particular type of person like creator or brand or whatever and you start to see the same x amount of things whether it's like they're all doing like me, like they're all doing crocheting or they're all doing this or they're all reading this one book or whatever. When you suddenly want to do that, it's like, do I really want to do that? Or is it, I've just seen this a million times in my feed. Is this something that I'm genuinely drawn to or have I been drawn to it? You know, like which way is the magnet pulling, right? I think that because I didn't really start using social media until after college, like Instagram started pretty much like when I was in college and I didn't use it actively. I was so secure about what I liked. I knew that like the music I listened to, it wasn't because I heard it a zillion times, it was because I actively sought it out and I fell in love with it. I know that the things that I liked when I was 21 and younger are things that I genuinely liked because I found them and I followed them. But now I'm like not so sure, you know? Like thinking about interior design, like do I really like this stuff or is this just what I think a living room should look like? Like I'm, I'm having a kind of, the more that I like dig deep into it, the more that I'm having like an identity crisis and I think the answer is to just go back to my emo phase honestly because that's when I felt most secure about what I loved. I'm digressing but an interesting thought that kind of bounced off of that was I was thinking back to the Wes Anderson exhibit that I took you guys to. I don't know I feel like I've heard this from a lot of people I don't think I'm alone in this but like when you 
watch a Wes Anderson film because his aesthetic is so unique and like easily recognizable you start to see the world the way that he does like it's so easily defined that like your brain gets it and your brain starts to look for those patterns too and so the whole day after I was at the Wes Anderson exhibition I was seeing as if I was in a Wes Anderson film and so I was kind of like as I was drinking coffee I was thinking about it and it was it kind of hit me that like what you see becomes how you see, if that makes sense. I recently found some pictures that I took when I was in college. Uh, I was big into photography then and I was so taken by how differently I framed things and, and literally how differently I think I saw the world then. And I really attribute it to the films I was watching at the time, the photographers I was interested at the time, etc. And I was wondering like how and why that changed and I think that everyone's artistic style changes all the time but I also genuinely think that if we're constantly seeing the same way to take a photo, like no offense, but like most of the people I follow on Instagram are just normal people like me that are just recording their lives. And we tend to inspire each other just naturally. Like we just imitate what we see and we all start to kind of look at the world in the same way. We frame our shots the same way. If you think about when you, you like take a picture of your food, you kind of have an idea of how to arrange it because you've seen so many Instagram photos of food, right? Art will always break through. I think that there will absolutely always be people who see the world differently and who will share that with us and like are honestly saving humanity, I think. I just worry that like the algorithm and like curated sites kind of keep us all in this if you get stuck in it like kind since it's mainstream right it's the majority we are all going to get caught up in seeing the world the same way and we're going to miss out on our own unique ways of looking at things like we did in the past when we were influenced by a lot more eclectic things like i remember i'm so i hope that tumblr comes back like i've heard whisperings of this but like i just remember tumblr the things that were posted were so strange and you would just come across something like totally not on your radar and be like whoa <laughs> like you didn't only see viral things or you didn't only see like this x amount of aesthetics that are trendy right now i just remember you would just I don't know, your imagination would constantly be kind of challenged and, and shown these strange things. <laughs> so anyway, I've just been feeling more and more that my kind of imagination, and this is totally like my fault in a way for like letting social media be my main source of content. But I think that like I've put my imagination on a little retractable leash. The algorithms on the websites that I use allow me to go a certain amount astray and then I like get jolted. It's like a 14 foot leash, right? And so I, as part of my like being secure in my sense of self, am now actively seeking out things that I wouldn't normally find. Every website now, like whether it's a news site or a content site, is going to have some kind of algorithm going on, but it's not gonna necessarily be completely towards me as an individual user. Um, it might just be like, what's majority trending? And that's fine. Actively searching out other content again. Um, I got out of that habit because it's so easy, but that's what I did. That's what everybody did 10 years ago. You know, that's how we found things online. And so yeah, if you have any interesting sites where you get especially I'm looking for like long form written content. Um, I've usually just go for the New Yorker and Dazed. Um, but if you have websites similar to that or anything you think um, shows interesting art and culture and things like that that aren't necessarily the norm right now, I would really appreciate it. Cause yeah, I would just like to be more sure that like this is a thing I'm interested in because I found it and it seemed interesting instead of it showed up in my feed 
so many times. So yeah, in 2022, that's really my goal. We went from productivity to here, but my goal is rather than focusing on self-improvement and, and growth and like learning new things, like I was, seriously guys, I was like learning, I was taking a vital signs course on Coursera because I felt like I should know first aid and stuff because uh, I don't know. It was super interesting. I know all about the heart now, which is really cool, but it wasn't like, I don't, maybe somebody gets me. I feel like you guys might know what I'm talking about, so I won't explain, but instead of going that route, I'm just going to focus on me internally because I think that when you're strong in who you are, a lot of things become easier and, and clearer um, is what I'm hoping. Um, I don't know if this made any sense. This was literally, like I said, shower thoughts. I just wanted to share that with you. I don't know. It was just something that was hindering me in making videos. I don't know. I, I felt like I needed to make self-improvement videos and like I needed to show new life milestone moments and stuff like that. And it was really kind of getting in the way of me making a video. So I think that me just talking about it Hopefully now I can be like, okay, if my life right now is really cozy and calm and cool, great. If people want to watch that, thank you. And if you don't, like, I get it. Come back to me when my life is a mess and I'm moving in like a year. I don't know. So yeah, I'm just sending you guys lots of love. This is a new year. It is the year of the black water tiger. Um, and so I hope that we can start it out well and fresh, you know? Um, I'm probably gonna post this much after the new year. It's the seventh today. Anyway, just <laughs> Carrie from the past is wishing you a very happy new year. All right, I'm gonna go. The sun has set um, and I will see you guys next time. So thank you for being here during my ramble back to usual content. I look forward to chatting in the comments. If I can't reply to them, just know that I read every single one. I've had a lot of like um, reply fatigue, I guess. I, I really appreciate it and I love you guys so much. So I, ooh, my computer wanted to go to sleep. So I will see you guys. I love you, happy new year. 